in this project, we created a model to predict energy usage per building and per meter. We will first present the data. Here, this graph shows the main meter reading by hour and day, with meter reading as y-axis, timestamp represented by the month of the year as the x-axis. Here, we present the meter data. On the x-axis, the meter type is read as 0 for electricity, 1 for chilled water, 2 for steam, 3 for hot water. The orange line shows the main meter reading for each meter type. Along with the box plot of meter reading by meter type, it looks like steam is the most inefficient way of heating things up. For primary use, the x-axis shows the primary category of activities for the building, while the y-axis shows the normalized number of observations. In addition, the orange line indicates the main meter reading for each primary use category. For year built, in the main meter reading by year built of the building, the x-axis shows the year built and the y-axis shows the main meter reading. For observation hour, an hour the meter reading was recorded. We can see that energy consumption raises up during the day and lowers during the night hours. For both the observation day of the month and of the week graph, we can see that variation exists in the data set. Before fitting the data set, we pre-processed our data set. First, we wrote a function called main imputation to find columns with non-values. Then we used the main value of this column to substitute the non-values. We merged train data frame, weather train data frame, and building train data frame. As you can see, there were still non-values existing after merging since a non-value would be created when the time in weather train didn't match with the time in train. We used drop noun function to solve this problem since these values at the time didn't exist and they're meaningless. Also, we convert timestamp values into weekdays and hours. We smooth and normalize our year build variable and square feet variable. Next, we converted the wind speed into certain level. For wind direction, we converted degrees to one of 32 points of the compass. For primary use variable, we used logo encoder to convert its values to numerical values since the original values are categorical. After pre-processing done, we trained AdaBoost Regressor to fit our design first. AdaBoost Regressor is an algorithm based on decision tree and to fit a sequence of small decision trees. We wanted to see how the performance of AdaBoost would be for this design. Also, we wanted to evaluate our own homemade AdaBoost function. We selected first 10,000 rows as our training data and last 10,000 rows as our testing data. As you can see, the mean square of built-in AdaBoost is around 3.1, and the mean square of homemade AdaBoost is around 3.69. Then we increase the number of rows to 100,000 rows to test our models. The mean square of built-in function becomes to 3.32, and the mean square of homemade function became to 3.04, which is slightly better than building function. The reason we saw is that the de definition of max depth is different for building and homemade. We define max depth as number of terminal nodes in our homemade functions. However, the definition of max steps in building is the number of paths at the longest path of this entry. Even though our homemade function would ha handle better with large data size than building function, the time spent on homemade function is 90 times more than the time spent on building function. Therefore, the building function is more efficient than homemade function to use. We also applied LightGBM to our process data. LightGBM is a popular decision tree based model. Different from other boosting algorithms such as AdaBoost, LightGBM grows its leaves horizontally instead of vertically. With time constraint and the complexity of the algorithm, we use the given LightGBM model instead of writing it from scratch. 
In this way, we're also able to apply the model to the entire train set. Using a large data set can help reduce overfitting. We perform the same pre-processing on the entire data set as before. Since this is a large data set, we also used k-fold cross-validation with four folds to get an average error rate. So root mean squared error is about 1.003, which is better than the eta boost, linear regression, ridge regression, and Bayesian ridge regression we previously used. Therefore, by applying the light GBM model to the test data, we can predict and output the meter reading for the test set. 